Joining me now is Martin Fletcher, who's not only the former NBC News Tel Aviv bureau chief, but related through his wife to those American hostages who were released. Martin, we have been sending our prayers to all of the families of the hostages. I've been watching your reaction throughout this afternoon, calling this a miracle. Well, it's a miracle for my family, and it's an ongoing tragedy for all the other hostage fa hostage families, yeah. I mean, so I, I've been in contact uh, throughout the afternoon with some of my family in Israel waiting for the the, uh, the two, the, uh, Natalie and, and Judith, to be freed. Their mother and sister went to the border to, to, to meet them. The rest of the family is celebrating, but at the same time they're saying, we're not celebrating too much because we don't know what condition they're in. They may, you know, certainly they're traumatized. They may be physically harmed. They may be sick. We don't know anything right now. They're in the hands. They're, they're an Israeli. They're at, they are at an Israeli army base close to Gaza. Um, hopefully by now with their with their loved ones together. But of course, the Israeli army and intelligence will be will be briefing, debriefing them for hours and hours, trying to find out what conditions they were held in where they were held, did they see any other hostages, what do they know about the way they were being kept, what can Israel and America learn about the remaining hostages, bearing in mind there's 200 more of them. You know, we're one happy family right now. There's a lot of other families still bitterly frightened. Absolutely. And Martin, to that point, I mean, no one knows this region better than you do. What might the release of these two hostages, your two beautiful family members, what might it mean for the other hostages? Well, it, it, the, the question is, why did Hamas release them? Yeah. Was it part of a deal? In this part of the world, very few things happen without a quid pro quo. So the assumption would be that secretly no one's talking about it. There's, there must be negotiations going on about the other hostages. There was talk earlier in the week about a possible exchange of women and children held by Hamas for women and children held by Israel, security prisoners, Palestinian security prisoners. Israel holds about 30 women and about 120 to 130 what they call minors, who have been arrested for security offences. So there is a potential swap. That's the area where there could most likely be a swap. But we haven't heard about it. We don't know any details. And everybody's very careful not to give anything away. And I can say one thing about one of my family members told me something and then called me back and said, oh, for God's sake, don't say anything on TV about that. So yeah. I'm not. Because obviously this is a real fluid, sensitive situation ongoing right now. But I feel there's a window of opportunity which is probably closing. As soon as Israel's ground invasion begins, if it does, that's when the possibility of negotiations for the release of hostages probably will end. So there's just there's a few days, we don't know how long, um, of time for negotiations to take place and have more people re released. When the ground invasion begins, that becomes a time of fighting and not talking. Well, your perspective is so critical. We are grateful that they have been released. We pray for their safe return and, and for a reunion with the rest of your family. As you say, we hope that's already underway. Martin Fletcher, I know we've got to let you go. I have many more questions for you, but I really appreciate your joining us. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.